and welcome to equation of a line through two points. Uh, just before we start, a reminder that there is a North Shotter available for this video. Just check the description below for a download link and you can work along with me as we go through the video. Okay, so uh, to begin with, we've been told that point A is 2, 7 and point B is negative 1, 1 and they both lie on the same line. Find the equation of the line. Now, to find the equation of a line, we've told it's a straight line and therefore we need to be thinking about y equals m x plus c and just a reminder about that m is the gradient of the line and c is the y intercept now i've given you here a um, a set of axes in order that we can actually use those to help us visualize it in this case um, so let's draw the two points two seven would be here and that's point a and negative one one is here that is point B and we know that they lie on a straight line and therefore we can join those up with a straight line now by looking at the diagram we can see here that the intercept is going to be 3 but I don't want to use the diagram just now um, in order to do this I want to show you how we can actually work out um, the value of C to be certain because again in mine it's actually a little bit off so it might not be 3 um, what I want to do is I want to think about these two elements, the gradient and the intercept. And I'm going to begin with gradient. And if you are finding the gradient of a line, you are looking to form a triangle between the two points that you've been given. And gradient is given by change in y over change in x. So change in y over change in x. And so in this case, the change in y is how far up the line has moved. In this case, it's gone up six spaces. How far along has it gone for the change in x? Well, it's gone three. And therefore, the gradient is going to be two. And so that tells me that my equation is y equals 2x plus c, because we've worked out the gradient. How do we then guarantee that we get the correct value for c? Well, we need to use one of the two coordinates we started with. And I'm going to use 2, 7. So 2, 7 means that y is 7 and that x is 2. And so 7 is 2 times 2 plus c. 2 times 2 is 4. So 7 equals 4 plus c. So what must c be? Well, if I take away 4, then c is 3. Therefore, the equation of the line that those two points would go through will be y equals 2x plus 3. If we try this again with point C being negative 2, 10, so negative 2, 10, and point D being 4, negative 8, here, if I join those together with my straight line, again here, it would look like the intercept is going to be 4, but let's uh, just check it. We're going to have y equals mx plus c again. And this time I'm going to form my triangle between the points. And so what is the change in uh, change in y this time? Well, the change in y, it's gone down and it's gone down 18 places. The change in x, it has moved to the right six spaces. So negative 18 over 6, well, that gives us a gradient of negative 3. So my equation is going to be y equals negative 3x plus c. And again, I now want to use one of my uh, coordinates in order to guarantee that I get the correct value for c. And I'm going to use 4, negative 8. And so that is telling me that negative 8 equals negative 3 times 4 plus c and negative 3 times 4 is negative 12 plus c and so how would I get c on its own well I'm going to add the 12 on so negative 8 plus 12 is positive 4 and so that is what c is y equals negative 3x plus 4 
Now in the next set of examples, I haven't given you any axes. Um, we've just got the information, the point A, 2, 2, and point B, 5, 14, both lie on the same line. Find the equation of this line. So how can we do this without having drawn them? Well, the key is that we need to begin with the gradient. And the gradient is change in y over change in x. And basically, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to call this coordinate 1 and this one 2. And I'm going to make this formula I'm slightly different. All I'm going to say is y1 take away y2 over x1 take away x2. And if I do that, the y coordinate in the first equation, uh, first coordinate is 2. And the y coordinate in the second is 14. The x coordinate in the first coordinate is 2. The x coordinate in the second is 5. And so I have 2 take away 14, negative 12. 2 take away 5, negative 3. Now if I do a negative divided by a negative, that means it is a positive. And so 12 divided by 3 is 4. So straight away, I can say that this has an equation y equals 4x plus something. What do I do next then? Well, to get c, I need to use one of the two uh, coordinates I began with in order to find c. So let's use 2, 2. That means that 2 equals 4 lots of 2 plus c. What is 4 lots of 2? Well, that means that 2 equals 8 plus c. How do I get c on its own? I take away the 8. So negative 6 equals c. The equation of the line joining those two points together is 4x take away 6. And we can just check that that actually works by using the second coordinate as well. So 5, 14. Let's just check that it actually fits. So that's 14 equals 4 lots of 5 take away 6. Well, 4 lots of 5 is 20. Take away 6 is 14. They match, and therefore the equation works for both coordinates. Let's try it again here. So point C to point D. If I want to find the gradient, well, I'm going to do y1 take away y2 over x1 take away x2. And so in this case, that is y1, 4, take away um, y2, so that's take away negative 4, x1 is 2, take away x2, which is 6, and so I have 4 take away negative 4, that is positive 8, 2 take away 6, well that is negative 4, if I have a positive divided by a negative, my answer is negative, and so I have negative 2. This line has a negative gradient. And so the equation of this line is y equals negative 2x plus c. To get c on its own, we'll use a one of the two points. Let's go with the first one. So y is 4, x is 2. So negative 2 times 2, well, that is negative 4. So 4 equals negative 4 plus c. To get c on its own, we will add on the 4, and so that tells me that c is 8. y equals negative 2x plus 8. Again, we can check that that definitely works by using 6, negative 4. So that would state that negative 4 equals negative 2 times 6 plus 8. Well, does it? Negative 2 times 6 is negative 12. Negative 12 plus 8 is negative 4. They match, and therefore the equation works for both points. And finally, we're going to look at a situation where we are told two points, but one of the coordinates is missing. Um, but we do know the gradient. So point A is the point with coordinates 5, 9. Point B is the point with coordinates D, 17. The gradient of line AB is 2. Find the value of D. 
Now what that means is we've been given the gradient and so we've been told basically what y1 take away y2 over x1 take away x2 actually is. And so we're going to fill those values in and then make it equal to 2. So y1 is 9 and y2 is 17. x1 is 5. And x2, well, that is d, we don't know yet. But it must equal 2. 9 take away 17. Well, 9 take away 17 is negative 8. Negative 8 over 5 take away d must equal 2. So the question is, what do I divide negative 8 by to make 2? Well, to make uh, negative 8 divided by something 2, well, it would have to divide by a negative. So it would have to be a negative number, and it would have to be negative 4. And so, what must d be? Well, that is telling me that 5 take away d is negative 4. And so d, if I have a look at this, well, I would need to add d. So 5 equals d take away 4, and then I would need to add 4. So d equals 9. Okay, so um, same situation. Uh, this time point C is the point with coordinates 5, 19. Point D is the point with coordinates 10, E. The gradient of line CD is 3. Find the value of E. And so because we've been told the gradient, we know that Y1 take away Y2, so 19 take away E, all over X1 take away X2, so 5 take away 10, well, that must equal 3, the gradient. And so let's just fill in a few of the values we can get from this. Well, 19 take away e, that is as it is. But 5 take away 10 is negative 5, and that would equal 3. Now I need to solve this equation so that I get the answer for e. So the first thing I'm actually going to do here is to multiply by negative 5. If I do that, it will remove the bottom of the fraction. So 19 take away e is negative 15 and so then I need to get e all on its own well the first thing I would do here I'm going to add e just so that I can get a positive value so 19 equals e take away 15 and then I will add the 15 if I add 15 well 19 plus 15 is 34 and so e would be 34 now we can check that by just questioning does it work for the gradient of 3 so a gradient of 3 means for every 1 along we go up 3 now if I've gone from 5 to 10 well I've actually done that 5 times so I should be 15 spaces higher than I was here and so 19 plus 15 would be 34 and so we are, have got exactly the right value now you can use that idea um, in these questions as well. For every one along, the gradient tells you how far up or down to move, and therefore you can use that to try to generate the coordinates as well. And so we end with the exam question, which came from the Edexcel paper in November 2018, and it was higher paper 2. And it says that the straight line L1 passes through the points with coordinates 4, 6, and 12, 2. The straight line L2 passes through the origin and has gradient negative 3. The lines L1 and L2 intersect at point P. Find the coordinates of P. Now, I'm going to break this down into um, three different sections because what we've got here is straight line L1, straight line L2, and then an intersection. So I'm going to start just with the first line. If we are thinking about L1 passing through two points, Basically, we need to work out what the, uh, what the equation of that line is. And therefore, we're going to have to do our y1 take away y2 over x1 take away x2 in order to find our gradient to begin with. So, y1 is 6, take away y2 is 2. What x1 is 4, x2 is 12. So, 6 take away 2, that is 4 over negative 8 meaning that this line has a gradient of negative a half. Now, 
That means that my equation for L1 must be y equals negative a half x plus c. Let's pop one of the values of our coordinates into the equation. Well, that would be 6 equals negative a half x, sorry, negative a half 4 plus c. Negative a half of 4 is negative 2. So 6 equals negative 2 plus c. And therefore c, if we add on the 2, c must equal 8. So L1 has the equation y equals a negative half x plus 8. Now that is the first stage of this uh, question. The second stage is about line L2. Now with L2, we don't actually have any working out to do here because we are told it has a gradient of negative 3. Therefore, we can say that y equals negative 3x. And it goes through the origin. As it goes through the origin, that means there is no intercept or an intercept of 0. And so it is just y equals negative 3x. The toughest part of this is actually the final stage. They intersect at point P. Well, what does that actually mean? Well, if two lines intersect, that is the solution to the simultaneous equations. And so these two equations must be equal to each other at a certain point. Now, the fact that we have y in both cases means that we can actually write these two equations equal to each other like this. Negative 3x equals negative half x plus 8. Because they are both equal to y, then they both must be equal to each other. Now what I need to do is find a solution to this equation in order to find the x coordinate. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add this half x on. So if I add half an x, I've got negative 2.5 x, and that would equal 8. And then x, well if I need to find x on its own, I need to divide by negative 2.5. Now this was a um, calculator question, so we could grab a calculator to do this. So, 8 divided by negative 2.5 equals negative 16 over 5. It's negative 3.2. So x equals negative 3.2. How am I going to find out what the y coordinate is? Well, again, I'm going to have to go back to one of my equations. And I'm actually, I'm going to use, in this case, I'm going to use the second equation, L2, because it just tells me y equals. And so I can just put the value straight in in order to get y. So y would have to equal negative 3 lots of negative 3.2. And if I do that... Well, 3 times 3.2 is 9.6, and it's a positive, so y would be 9.6. And so the coordinate of point P, well, P must be negative 3.2 and positive 9.6. And so that would be the point of intersection between the two lines we were given.